Greetings, and welcome back to Doctor Who Revisited, where I go through every single episode of Doctor Who, from 1963 all the way up to 2022, and review them. And now we are going to talk about a, another great episode that I love so much that the BBC threw out. The Underwater Menace. I love this episode. And you don't really hear me say that a lot about the missing episodes, but this episode is really, really good. And again, it frustrates me to no end the stupidity of the BBC for throwing out all their good stuff. But you know what? At least two episodes of the serial survive. So we can t take comfort in that. And I did actually uh, see in the news recently that they are going to remake that episode in animated form. So something to look forward to. Because this episode, really, more than most in the classic series, this is one I really, really would have loved to have seen in its entirety. But, alas, we're really only left with the two episodes that uh, we have. But these two episodes really does help to show you the world that this episode is taking place in. Now, obviously, it's a completely ridiculous premise. Like, I acknowledge that. Like, it's it's... Bonkers. So, in the relatively near future, I believe it's somewhere in the 70s or 80s, or I can't remember the exact time period, but at some point, this Russian scientist, genius, disappears because he happened to find the lost city of Atlantis, and he told the Atlanteans that he can help bring Atlantis back up to the surface. Like, again, the bonkersness of the episode itself, but I love it. It is an Atlantis-based episode, which is something that, unfortunately, we don't really get to see a lot in Doctor Who. There are really only two serials or episodes I can recall that actually do take place in Atlantis itself. There's this one, The Underwater Menace, and The Time Monster, which in and of itself doesn't really take place a lot. In Atlantis, at least not the entire episode, but who cares? We get to see an Atlantis-based episode, and obviously, uh, first of all, I love the, how they introduce it with uh, the do oh, sorry, uh, Jamie, Ben, and Polly uh, going on to explore this new area that they just landed. And can I just say that this companion trio is very underrated. I, for as many few episodes as they did have together as a team. I think they were great. I think they really, really worked well. Now, obviously, uh, they already started the dynamic of um, Ben and Polly kind of having feelings for each other, but they weren't allowed to express it on television at the time because of stupid rules that, that were in place on television in the 60s. Whatever. You can kind of tell that these two characters like each other a lot. So throwing in another man into the into the mix, a sort of third wheel, on normal terms should really throw off the dynamic. But in my opinion, I don't think it did. I actually did like the that they still kept the idea that there was something going on between Ben and Polly. But the introduction of Jamie did not hinder their relationship together. In fact, it, it felt more like friends. Like, like they, 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 they were just a couple of friends enjoying themselves. And this is one of the things that I really enjoy about uh, companion teams where it's more than one or more than two companions at a time. Like, I always say that you need to find a way to balance these things out. And I think they, really, they did in a really great way. With these two, uh, with these uh, three characters, and we're going to see that a lot with the whole, like I keep saying, giving every one of the companions something to do. Now, obviously, the introduction of Atlantis, with starting with these caves, with these cave paintings that somehow lead into an elevator that goes down, 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 all the way to Atlantis. So, like, there is a way you can find Atlantis in a cave. And go go there by using a, a elevator, 
Which kind of begs the question, why don't the Atlanteans use the elevator to go up to the surface? But I guess, I mean, they want the whole city, structures and all, to be raised up to the surface. Not just leave, all the people leave the city and build their own community on the surface. On that note, I do understand that. But, again, just there's an elevator that leads to Atlantis. What's not to like about this? But anyways, um, the costume design of the Atlanteans look great. For as much as you can't see, the set design of Atlantis itself looks really good. And, you know, the, uh, the, the, the labs and the sciencey stuff that uh, Professor Zaroff uses, that kind of looks like a generic Doctor Who thing. So I like the scenes that take place in actual Atlantis with the giant temple and the sacrificial area. And a lot of it is just throw the Doctor and friends, into a fish tank. And, like, I love how the Doctor sort of stays off the execution, just leaving a note for Professor Zaroff, and he and he writes the, the his initials as Doctor Who, or rather, D.W. Again, something that was introduced in the previous episode with the Highlanders, calling himself uh, Doctor Ver, I think, the, uh, the German equivalent of Doctor Who. But him just... Signing the, his initials D.W. to Professor Zaroff, who thinks that he's got something important to say, when in reality, he's got nothing. He just used him to stave off the execution, and then sort of found a way to soothe his ego a little bit by, say, by telling him how brilliant he is, and that's how he sort of got permission to stick around Atlantis and not get himself killed. Yeah, it's the Doctor. What can you say? The Doctor does what the Doctor does. But overall, like I said, the, the, I, I love the, the set design and I, and I love uh, the, the people of Atlantis itself. Other than that, it's pretty much a generic uh, plot for, uh, for Doctor Who. You know, with the mad scientist and he's got a plan. And this is another thing that I will say in, in Zaroff's favor is that he's not purely evil. Like, obviously the best villains are the ones that believe they're the good guys. This is more or less what Zaroff is trying to do. He's trying to bring Atlantis back to the surface. Obviously this is what this is the story he told the Atlanteans, that he can bring the entire city back up to the planet's surface. But what he really is doing underneath all that, he says he's trying to prove his theory is correct, even at the cost of the entire planet. Like, he's so desperate to prove he's right that he's willing to blow up the entire planet in order to do that. And God help anyone who gets in his way. I like that in a villain. And w this also has one of my absolute favorite moments from all of Doctor Who. A moment of just pure, unadulterated, unapologetic overacting it's just amazing when he after he shoots the two Atlantean people he's like nothing in the world can stop me now like, it's so good I love it and again it's horrible overacting to the highest degree but I love it I, I don't know what to tell you I love when he goes out of his way to prove to show how crazy that character is and you can kind of tell that the director kind of told him to tone it down a bit in the next few episodes because, again, this is the cliffhanger. And he goes like, NOTHING IN THE WORLD CAN STOP ME NOW! In the next episode, which obviously picks up immediately after he does that, it's a little bit different where he goes, NOTHING IN THE WORLD CAN STOP ME NOW! So clearly they kind of told him to tone it down a bit, but I don't care. I love that moment where he just goes all out batshit crazy, yelling to the, to the sky, or rather the roof of the cave, whatever. I like that. And I like that, uh, again, not so much as in the previous episode, but the girl power of the, that, that one girl who uh, helps the doc, uh, free the doctor and helps uh, the doctor and friends uh, get to safety, which kind of... I can't help but wonder if that is another fragment of Clara Oswald, because again, she's a girl around the same height as Clara. 
you know, going out of her way, risking her own life to save the doctor and friends. And her name is Ara. You know, Ara, Clara. Kind of help, but can't help but wonder if the girl from the previous episode was also another one of the aspects of Clara Oswald. I mean, the name of the doctor just ruined the show for me in a lot of ways. But whatever. I, I will I will never be able to stop thinking about any female character being Clara in any episode of Doctor Who that I am ever going to watch. But, be that as it may, if it is Clara, if it's not, I, I like this girl. I like, like I said, the costume, which, which the how, which the, how they gave uh, all the Atlanteans in this episode. And I like her involvement in the episode. Just, you know, can't really escape the gnawing feeling at the back of my skull that maybe this was another Clara. But that's beside the point. So, the marketplace, I love the marketplace. I love all the people running around in there. And I love how the, uh, the doctor sort of tricked Zaroff into, uh, into getting captured and how Jamie and Ben uh, sort of became guards undercover. I like the two humans who were working at the mines in, uh, the, in Atlantis. I love the design of the fish people. And when you really stop and think about it, it's a pretty crazy and scary body horror thing. Now, like, ignore how ridiculous they might look like by today's standards. The, the design, for what they had to work with at the time, in the 60s, the design of the fish people looks really good. I like how the some of the effects of them swimming underwater looked. And just, you know, it's one of those episodes where, A, I wish I could have seen in its entirety. I'm really excited to see the animated version. And uh, it's one of those episodes where I think could have worked well today. And the honestly, the Patrick Troughton era has a lot of these. A lot of episodes that are very topical today and could work today with obviously the bigger budget and um, the technological advantages of its time. And obviously, if, if they... I think a lot of uh, elements from this episode would have been CGI'd and not practical like they were in this episode. That, that's a bit of a trade-off you'll have, you'll have to consider. But like I, like I said, I, I think this episode could work well today with obviously the, the upgraded, um, the way TV shows are made today is one way of putting it. But other than that, I think I pretty much touched on everything and... Uh, I will end up by saying that this follows another one of the trends that I really liked about the 1960s era of Doctor Who, where the final moments of the last episode of a serial tease what's going to happen next. And so the uh, after the, uh, Ben and Polly kind of make fun of the Doctor for not being able to pilot his TARDIS correctly, he tries to prove them wrong by saying, just for that, we're going to Mars! And then the TARDIS sort of shakes around and uh, they apparently crash land somewhere, which the location will be revealed in the next episode. But that, obviously, is a story for another time. So, thank you all for watching if you have. Uh, let me know what you think about this episode and uh, do you like the episode as much as I do or uh, do you don't like this episode as much as I do? And uh, do you think that that girl Ara, I think her name is Ara, do you think that is a Clara Oswald? So, until the next one, everybody. Nothing in the world can stop me now! Hi there. Thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time.